Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru Legacy. This is a four-door mid-size sedan with seating for five. And this particular model is the 3.6R Limited. It of course features Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive and has fog lights up front. Pretty flat underbelly underneath the car to help reduce drag. There are also two cameras mounted at the top of the interior of the windshield which are used for the active cruise control. Keyless entry and push button start. You can unlock the vehicle simply by placing your hand on the handle. And then you can lock it by pressing towards the front. Large and deep rear trunk. Also where the spare tire is kept there's little storage compartments and the spare tire is underneath. As tested, this vehicle's MSRP is 33380 as it includes the moonroof package, keyless access and push-button start, navigation, and eyesight. So let's take a look under the hood. Gas shocks to hold up the hood. So as is the trend now, there is an engine cover. Uh, this can be pretty easily removed. You simply pull up on the back and then pull it forward. And once that's off, everything is pretty much exposed. Now, the battery placement is up in the top left of the vehicle, so I'm not a huge fan of that from a uh, weight distribution standpoint, where the weight's towards the front and also on the side of the driver, but it is easily accessible. A lot of the servicing points, however, though, are right in the front. So you've got your coolant fill right here, you've got your engine fill here, and your dipstick here battery right beside it and your windshield washer fluid so all of the points you're going to you know be touching with some frequency all in one easy to access spot right at the front of the vehicle now this is a 3.6 liter boxer six cylinder engine producing 256 horsepower at 6,000 rpm and 247 pound feet of torque at 4,400 rpm now boxer of course meaning that the pistons are opposed to one another, the cylinders are opposed to one another. So you've got one piston moving this direction while the other is moving that direction. And you have two sets of three cylinders on each side. So all of the pistons oppose one another. And the benefit of this is uh, it's a well balanced engine. You don't have the primary and secondary imbalances that you have with some of the other engine models. And also it keeps the center of gravity of the engine pretty low. So it improves the handling characteristics of the vehicle. This engine features aluminum block end heads, dual overhead cams, and valve timing on both the intake and exhaust. This has a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1 and uses 87 regular octane gas. The engine mounts where you see that letter H, just below it is the isolator which apparently is liquid filled to further reduce vibration. Overall the engine bay is pretty open with the only cover being that main one over the engine. Everything else is pretty accessible. Now the engine cover is vented to let out heat where the alternator sits. So let's follow the path of the intake air. So we've got our air coming in the front. It's going to pass through here and into the air filter. After traveling through the air filter, it'll head back, come around to the electronically controlled throttle body, and then pass into the intake manifold. Now as seems to be the trend, this is also a plastic uh, composite intake manifold. Uh, all three vehicles I've tested so far have had this, so I guess this is what everyone's going to. Uh, lightweight uh, and cheap, so you know there are benefits to it. The air is then split up individually to each of the six cylinders, so it'll pass through each one of these runners. After the air travels through the engine, each cylinder bank features its own exhaust manifold. The two exhaust manifolds then join up to a common center pipe. That center pipe goes all the way to the back where it then splits back into two separate mufflers. Power travels from the engine to a continuously variable transmission, where it's then sent to all four wheels. The weight distribution of the all-wheel drive system is nearly split 50-50, right and left, giving it the symmetrical all-wheel drive name. All four wheels are the same, 18 inches, wrapped in Goodyear 225 over 50 rubber. 12 inch ventilated disc brakes up front, matched with a McPherson strut type suspension. This upper mount has a very large coil spring. Not many coils, but it's a very thick spring. Here you can see the lower control arm, and you've got the drive axle coming in here with the CV joint. Here you have the steering linkage connecting up to the front. You've also got your anti-roll bar right here. It's always interesting looking at how they connect up the anti-roll bars. This one here has this very long tube which connects up 
towards the top of the strut. So when this moves up and down, it's pulling this anti-roll bar up and down and then transferring that force over to the other side. Slightly smaller disc brakes in the rear, but they are ventilated, which you don't always see in rear brakes, so good to see. Double wishbone suspension with coilover spring. One unique thing, this lower A-arm is actually split into two pieces. It's also a fairly wide A-arm. You can see the one channel here and then the other coming in here. Here you have the tow link, which is adjustable at the end. There you can see where the coilover attaches to the lower mount. And of course the upper control arm right here. So let's have a look at the interior. So checking out the interior, absolutely tons of leg room. Um, I'm about 6'1", 6'2", and I can fit my legs in here very easily. You can also adjust the front seat for the driver in 10 different ways. Steering wheel, leather wrapped, uh, all leather seats, uh, leather on the doors as well, so everything you touch for the most part is soft touch. To the left of the steering wheel you have this little control panel which is pretty convenient. Uh, you can pop your trunk, you can turn off the steering responsive fog lights. This basically is just uh, automated fog lights based on your steering angle in a corner. Uh, you can turn off the vehicle dynamic control, the traction control basically. Uh, this is the blind spot detection, so this gives you a notification in your mirror when there's a car on your blind spot coming up behind you. Uh, vehicle departure lane warning, so when you start to drift outside of your lane, it will give you a little indicator saying, hey, you're drifting outside of the lane, you should get back on the road. Uh, and then also this automatic braking, so if it detects that a collision is about to occur, then it will automatically brake for you and you can turn that off if you would like. Power mirrors and windows, as well as two selectable settings for the driver. The steering wheel, very comfortable, firm, uh, but small, and all of the buttons easily within reach for your thumbs. On the right side here we have the adaptive cruise control, which I'll talk about more when I test drive it. Very cool system, which uses these two cameras up here. You also can uh, use the Bluetooth for calling uh, and select through the menu uh, for different options, such as looking at your fuel economy, uh, trip info, stuff like that. Now one of the first things I noticed sitting in this vehicle was just how spacious it is. Now as far as visibility, out the front is pretty good. Uh, out the rear I think is excellent. You can see your blind spot really well by turning around. You also have this moonroof here. To start up the engine, simply put your foot on the brake. It'll indicate here now that you can start the engine. Press that button and it starts right up. So you've got navigation, um, some apps, but nothing spectacular as far as the apps. You've got Pandora, but the navigation system is actually pretty decent compared to some of the other ones I've used. Um, and the touch screen is actually pretty good. So like when you're typing, it literally can read as fast as I can type, which compared to most touch screens uh, is unheard of. You know, a lot of these systems phones are much better than. Uh, in this case, the touchscreen itself is actually pretty good. Bluetooth audio as well with this, and it has a 575 watt Harman Kardon audio system, which is actually very good. In the center, you've got this storage area. It actually has two USB ports as well as an auxiliary uh, 3.5 millimeter cable to play music and a power outlet. Uh, I actually like this stand right here. It's perfect for a cell phone, which is pretty convenient. Not many cars have something this simple to just let your phone sit in. Also you've got these two cup holders. This is removable so you can adjust the size. Uh, electronic parking brake, simply pull that up. So sitting in the rear I do have space for my legs. I got the front seat adjusted where I will be sitting and I'm sitting behind it now. Uh, and there is space for my legs so pretty good there. Uh, spacious, like I mentioned earlier, this vehicle is very spacious. And the center seat is actually usable. The transmission hump is fairly low. Uh, and you also have this fold down with some cup holders. Also for the rear seats, you've got two setting selectable heated seats and you've got the air conditioning vents back here. Okay, let's go for a test drive. So, does it have enough power? First question. And the 
2.6 is pretty uh, torquey. It's got it's got a good amount of power. It accelerates pretty quickly. Uh, the CVT acts kind of uh, unique. So if you accelerate lightly, the CVT will accelerate at a constant low RPM, and it'll hold the RPM at that low uh, range, and then it'll just accelerate up, adjusting the transmission rather than having set gear ratios. Now, if you floor it, then it acts a little bit differently. And what the CVT will do is kind of duplicate gears. So, you know, you'll go up all the way to red line and then it'll shift down and then it'll go up to red line and it'll shift down as you're accelerating. So it acts a little differently depending on what you're doing. The steering wheel feels really good. The seat is a little wide for me, um, but I probably fall outside of the normal width ratio. So I can't really blame Subaru for that one. It is very spacious, like I said earlier, uh, and quiet as well. One of the other things that I really like is the brake pedal feel. I don't think I've ever driven a vehicle where I like the brake pedal feel as much as I like it in this. Uh, and I was trying to think of the best way to describe it. The best thing I can think of is if you press it very gently, it doesn't have much resistance to you pressing it and it brakes very lightly. If you press a little bit more, uh, it has a little bit more resistance and it brakes, you know, with kind of like a medium amount. And then if you press on it very firmly, there's a lot of resistance and it requires a lot of uh, pushing a lot of force and it brakes quite hard and the transition between all of those is extremely smooth and gradual so it, it really communicates well with you how hard you want to brake uh, is directly dependent on how much you press in that pedal and it directly relates with how much pressure uh, it has so a lot of vehicles now you know you just tap it lightly and it slams on the brake this there's a ton of feedback it does exactly what you predict and it's very smooth so it's probably one of my favorite things about this vehicle honestly is the brake pedal feel i think it feels fantastic now it also does feature a manual shifting mode so i'll go ahead and get into that now so i'm in fourth i'll downshift to second now, the paddle shifters move with the steering wheel, which is nice. They're connected to it. Uh, one of the things, though, this is definitely more responsive than the automatic paddle shifters. It actually does change when you click on it. You feel something happening the instant you click on it, especially with the downshifts. But one of the things that's kind of strange is if you're on the gas and you upshift, let me get into a straight here, and downshift down to first. Now I'm on the gas, upshift, it kind of jolts you for back when you shift. There's a little bit of uh, additional torque somehow when you shift up. So it's noticeable, I'm gonna shift up, and then there's a little boost uh, when it shifts to that lower gear ratio, which is kind of interesting. That said, I still think it's better than the ones in automatic uh, gearboxes with the regular conventional planetary sets. You know, you do feel secure driving around. You've got all-wheel drive, so you don't have any wheel slip. And it does hold pretty well. That said, it does still have a bit of roll. But, you know, it's not really meant for carving up canyons. The engine, very smooth. Uh, and that's just part of that boxer deal, and it's a six-cylinder boxer, so these are just typically really smooth engines. So, driving on the highway, you can tell one of the things Subaru was going for in this was a quiet ride. Uh, we're going about 65, this is a pretty rough highway, and as you can tell, there's not much noise coming from the road from the tires, so pretty good there. Now, one of the things I love about this vehicle, and there are other vehicles that feature this, but it has adaptive cruise control, and let me just take a moment to explain how this works. It's actually a really cool system. So you set your cruise control as you do normally, uh, and then you can set a distance of which you want to follow a car ahead of you. So if a car, you know, if you want to follow very closely or far away, you can change that distance with some settings right here on the steering wheel. What happens is you set it to 65 miles per hour, let's say, and you're traveling along and then there's a car ahead of you traveling at 50 miles an hour. When you catch up to that vehicle that's traveling 50 miles an hour, your vehicle slows down to their speed and maintains a certain distance behind them, which is just super convenient. And let's say they slam on the brakes. Well, this will slam on the brakes for you. Literally, uh, you could close your eyes and just, if you're just going down a straight line, it would just do all the work for you. Now don't close your eyes, that's dumb. But what I'm saying is the system works and it works great. 
So let's say you're traveling behind a car and you've got your cruise control set to 65, they're doing 45. Well, if you switch over to the left lane, even if there's cars in the left lane ahead of you doing 65, the second it sees that you've got an opening, it'll accelerate up to 65. So it's a very adaptive system uh, and it takes a lot of uh, control out from the driver's responsibility, which is super nice. You know, you're on a long road trip, you don't want to think about you know, matching the speed that the car ahead of you is doing. This is a fantastic system for that. It's one of those things that you think, oh, I don't really need that, but then once you have it, you really like it. So if you are ever offered a vehicle and this is an upgraded feature that you can buy, I would definitely recommend it. It's awesome. Now, one of the other things that the cruise control does is it has two different uh, decel or excel rates. You can go down to the nearest five. So if I'm at 65, I can press this button down and it'll go down to 60 or you can press it down lightly and it'll go down to 59 from 60 so one at a time or to the nearest five and if you actually slow it down to a low enough number it'll apply the brakes for you and slow you down so if you're coming up to a low speed zone and you don't want to worry about dealing with the brakes you just set it to the speed that you're coming to and it'll break down to that speed you also have blind spot detection on both of the mirrors so if there's a car coming up on your left there's a little orange indicator light that'll appear on the mirrors and show you that there's someone in your blind spot. I was actually driving it on the highway and the car in front of me slammed on their brakes and before I even noticed that they had slammed on their brakes, the Subaru was already braking. So I thought that was pretty cool. I would have caught it regardless. I was at a you know safe distance, but the fact that it braked because it knew the car in front of me was braking was pretty cool. So overall, I really like this car. Uh, there's several things I like about it. The brake, uh, one of my favorite things. The visibility is fantastic. It's very quiet, um, low vibration, you know, you're pretty isolated in here, so ride quality is pretty good. Uh, the engine, you know, a decent amount of power. It's nothing super impressive, but it does have a good amount of power and, you know, it's all you really need. It gets great fuel economy, so I'm impressed with that. All-wheel drive and a 3.6 liter and it's still getting 32 miles worth a gallon uh, on my test run that I did. So impressive there. Now, some of the things that I, uh, I'm not too fond of, you know, it's really hard for me to say because honestly, this is a great car. Uh, I have some secret engineers that also look over these occasionally with me and both of them also really liked it. Several things that I would say, the throttle is a little touchy. Uh, it's not bad, but it is a little touchy. And I think that's just because compared to the brake, which feels so good, uh, it's just a little, you know, offset. Uh, the wood grain on the inside, the plastic wood grain, I'm not a huge fan of. I think it would have been better if it was just aluminum, but that's just appearance and what do engineers know about appearance, so I won't critique them on that. Uh, and then the one other thing is these seats are just a little wide, maybe an adjustment so that I could uh, adjust the side bolsters and have a better fit. I kind of slide around in it. Then again, I am pretty narrow, so I can understand, you know, some people would probably really like these seats. They're pretty wide, pretty comfortable.